Today we have the oral exam for the computer graphics course. For those who are not part of the class, uh, you're going to see teams are going to be presenting their work uh, on their final project. So without further ado, the stage is yours. My name is Jacob. I'm Johan. And we are the planetarium team. Um, so yeah, we have, uh, we have made this 3D model of uh, our solar system with every planet that is officially recognized as a planet as well as the sun. And at first, small side note, you may realize that the sun is not the correct size. <laughs> <laughs> it would not be very practical. One thing just for the for the sake of presentation, all of the planet's distances and sizes are all to scale. And we're actually using a logarithmic scale because another problem is if you use linear, there's a very, very large space between the close planets and the far planets. So no matter how you do it linearly, you end up with a bunch of planets here, way too much empty space, and way too many planets there. So, uh, other maps. Planetarium, we have made uh, what we call the point of interest camera, which is uh, the camera is focused on a single object. Object. Um, from the beginning, it's focusing on the sun, but if we click, say, Jupiter, it's going to focus on Jupiter, and it's always um, maintaining the same radius, which can be changed by scrolling. Wow, look at that. <laughs> So we can focus on different planets. Even the moon. The moon is the only oh. satellite other than the planets. Is it actually in the sun? It looks a little odd. Oh, it might. Oh. Yeah, no, the, the following is not 100% complete. It, sh it does eventually lock into the planet, but we had a hard time making it lock. Mm -hmm without making it just jump from one place to another. Like, it looks very bad. So the way it works is if you click on an object multiple times, it goes quicker and quicker. So the idea is that if you don't want to run into that following glitch, well, actually, it, I can make it happen right now. It's really full form. I actually have timeline control as well. We can speed it up. <laughs> <laughs> so if you click on an object and you speed it up, you'll see that the camera's chasing it, yeah. and it'll never reach the object. Yeah, um, the way to do this, the, um, like, Chasing an object is by. Uh, <coughs> we have our, our current focus point, and we have a, a target focus point. And then for each uh, for each frame or for each update, we move I think, one tenth of the distance between them. So first this point is going to be slightly less. And eventually we'll get like infinitely close, but never actually hit the object. So when we reach a certain thre threshold, we just say. Now set the the gaze vector to to the target object. Yeah, actually, if you want, it's, it's, it depends on the number of clicks. But if you click it only once, it literally does exactly this: half, and half, and half, and half, and half, and half. Which, of course, if you never ran into rounding errors, it would never reach the object. We have rounding error, but we also have set a threshold. But that's the thing. It doesn't always reach the threshold in a timely manner. So if you don't lock into the object before you speed up, you get that weird thing where the object's going here and the camera's just kind of chasing it all over the place. We also have this uh, uh, free camera where you can free to move around in the, uh, in the XC plane using the WASD keys. All the planets are on their own planes, but the, um, the camera only moves on the Y equals zero plane. And, uh, no, sorry, Y equals zero plane, yeah. And uh, Y, of course, being our up vector. So if you're following an object, it'll actually like move up and down slightly. 
as you're following the object, but if you're moving around with WASD keys, you'll always stay in zero. It's just a small technicality. And also, yeah, the timeline. Yeah, so uh, for the time, timeline controls, um, we're able to speed up the flow of time up to, I think, eight times. Yeah, actually, I removed the cap just for fun. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it actually does break if you go too high. I'm not sure why that is. You just refresh. Yeah, so you just reset. Oh, you pause it. OK, that's good. Yeah, and you can. Uh, yeah. And if you press one, it goes back to the original. So reset. Uh, you can also so rewind. <laughs> and uh, yeah. another small detail is that the rotations, the objects are not rotating as many times as they should be. But that's because if you make the objects rotate, like for example, the, the Earth is not rotating 365 times every time it goes around the sun. It's rotating a little less. But it's because even at this speed, you'll notice that this one has started to rotate pretty fast compared to some of the other objects. Like the Earth isn't spinning very fast. This one is spinning. It's all in an attempt to make it. Because obviously, if you look at this with the real scale, you literally can't see anything. Like the, the sun compared to any other planet is ridiculous. And especially the distances between the objects are ridiculous. You can't see anything. It's not useful. The, so the goal here is to make something that is kind of useful, kind of educational, but also just looks pretty. <laughs> So, um, <coughs> so that's actually good place. The most complicated, well, the simple, let's just start with the simple planets like Jupiter. Incredibly simple. There's a texture and there's diffuse lighting, and the point is always the sun. So, uh, you know, it's pretty basic. We've done it's the same way we've lit everything. Actually, it's simpler than the lighting we've done. There's no specular lighting, it's just diffuse. Um, Yes. One small change is that instead of uh, usually when we do, <laughs> sorry, let's do something on the board here. The way we've been doing it is that the normals, uh, if the light is here, uh, if you want to light this object, you have this here and the normal here. So uh, both this angle and this angle are dimming. Planet, so it dims very, very quickly. To achieve, as you can see, it's uh, it, there's a very distinct line in the middle. To achieve that, what I did is instead of then taking this vector, which is what we've been doing all this time, I always take this vector to the center of the planet. As though every, every point on the planet, uh, the light from the sun is coming from the exact same direction. So basically, if you're rendering this point, well, the, the way we've been doing it before is like this, is that if you're rendering this point, the light is coming from here, then it's coming from here, then it's coming from here. But the model that was done here is that if you render this point, the light is coming from here. If you render this point, the light is coming from here still. It's always the same direction because once again, in the real solar system, the sun is insanely far away, so you can't see that. It re you really have the like, light and day difference. So that was just how that effect was achieved. And after that, I actually found this really awesome website with all these awesome textures, and that's why it looks so nice. But um, So this is the gas planet, and then after that you have the terrestrial planets, which uh, have a bump map. And uh, you can't see it super well here, let's see. I think the Earth is probably one of the best places to see it. Is that if you look at the, the hills, like the Himalayas and stuff, you see that the shadows actually make it look like if it's popping out. It's not actually popping out, not even close. Um, it is just a sphere, but using the um, using a bump map, you just slightly modify the normals along the sphere to make it look like if you know, certain sections. There, actually, yeah, it's a little smudgy on the projector. You can't see it super well. But, you know, like, there's a huge mountain range right there, and there's a huge mountain range right there. 
and it's just going to cast a few more shadows. Makes it look nicer. And the last thing uh, that the, only the Earth has is the, well, there's two things only the Earth has. You'll notice the specular lighting does not appear on land. It only appears on the water. And that's just an effect. Specular lighting does not happen in space like that. Like, you don't see reflection from the water. But, you know, we're humans and <coughs> we don't know what to expect, so it just looks pretty. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the last thing is Earth, of course, is the only one with this. Uh, there's uh, there's a night posture where you can actually see the lights from all the cities, which uh, once again you wouldn't be able to see, <laughs> but it looks nice. <laughs> um, okay, so you can turn the lights back on. And uh, yes, the. Um, to do all of those effects, um, actually use multiple. Oh, a small side note: if anyone was wondering, the star, the stars are not accurate at all. It's just one texture repeated six times. <laughs> that you can actually kind of see the corner when you rotate. Yeah, I think sometimes sometimes you can see the like it reflects in the yeah. edge of the sky. I try to find it. You know, it's not really important. It's not a real star shape. Um, yeah, so actually all the planets, just for uh, optimization's sake, because while the Earth is super complex, it has, let's see, has a color map, a bump map, a specular map, and a night map. So there's four separate textures used in rendering it, whereas a planet like Jupiter only has the one texture, so they're actually all separate shaders, uh, just to because otherwise you run into like a just really, really complex, <coughs> convoluted shader that has all sorts of conditionals, and you have to pass all sorts of uniforms to or you know, has night texture, or has specular lighting, and has this and has that, and it's just a hassle. But of course, um, the most interesting aspect visually is the, the glare from the sun, which is actually not at all uh, Realistic once again. This looks great. <laughs> Just kind of like a theme going on with this project. Um, you should show it again with the lights off. Oh, yeah. Sure. yeah. Where you can see that, and um, if you see the. Maybe save it as a wallpaper. <laughs> yeah. It goes on top of the planet until the planet starts to go in front of the sun, and it completely closes the sun, and then it comes back out on the other side. And the way to achieve that is actually not nearly as complex as you might think. Let's <laughs> back on. What you do is you actually you draw what's called an occlusion map, 